Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders like my friend Atif over here from within the digital infrastructure space. And Atif, we are live at DCD Connect in the Big Apple, New York City, New York. How are you? I'm doing great, Dean. It's great to be here again with you yeah. in New York. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. And the show going well for you. It's, it's amazing. So busy. I guess the data center market is really exploding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, this guy right here, this is Antif, I'm sorry, Atif Ansar. And Atif is the executive chairman and co-founder of Foresight. Atif, you're no stranger to JSA TV, so I'm going to jump right into this. Go for it. Um, you, are position, you position yourselves as the control tower for data center construction projects. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about that? So look, data centers are incredibly critical to the economy right now. They are absolutely exploding in terms of number of projects being built. There's a 10x increase in volume of construction from under 500 megawatts four years ago to over 5,000 megawatts today. With that growth has come a lot of complexity in the supply chain. The scale of projects is going up. Uh, the number of components, suppliers, you need up to 1,000, 1,500 people on site to build uh, uh, a hyperscale data center. So that means a lot of things can simply slip, uh, you know, from one's fingers. Yes. And no human being, the complexity is so great, no human team can cope with that complexity. We know from Nobel Prize winning research, going all the way back to the 60s and 70s, human beings can only remember about five chunks in their head. <laughs> But in a data I don't know center why that's project, funny to me, but it makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, you know, Herbert Simon's work showed that in a data center project, you've got to remember a million chunks. Yeah. So the basic idea that we have at Foresight is we read your complex data, translate that like a control tower into bits, the five bits that every person has to manage using machine intelligence. So you can effectively use our AI engine mm -hmm. as an extension of your human memory so that no bolts get dropped. Mm -hmm. And it helps to keep everything on track, keep the entire supply chain coordinated, and give yourselves a, a, an hour-by-hour hour view on what's happening in your project and what you need to do to accelerate it. I love it. And you mentioned AI, and you don't get out of the chair without talking about AI. But why don't you talk uh, a little bit about how AI is ultimately uh, and helping to enable some of the, the efficiency and quality um, on your side? So look, what our research has shown is 9 out of 10 data centers are running late right now. The average overrun is 34% in terms of time. Mm -hmm. So that means an 18-month project is prone to becoming like a 24, 26-month project. Um, now. Underlying that is schedule information in very complex databases. One of mm -hmm. them is known as Primavera P6, uh, Microsoft, which is an Oracle product. Microsoft has a competing product called Microsoft Project. Mm -hmm. These are black boxes. They're very valuable uh, products, mm -hmm. um, cannot be denied. But these are black boxes that are typically owned by a few people on a project site. Mm -hmm. And the data underlying them is not visible to the superintendents, the field engineers, to it. the executives. Yeah. So the dependencies of how uh, something not getting done impacts all the other dominoes that rely upon the first one falling yes. are very hard to map out. So what Foresight and our AI helps to do is read that data, make sense of it, and then compare it against our historical database. And then ultimately going back to the control tower analogy, make sure the right people know what they need to do, when they need to do it, and where they need to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little bit like a dispatch problem of how mm -hmm. FedEx might dispatch a parcels or how an air traffic control system might route the aircrafts so you don't have mid-air collisions, basically. It's, it's, uh, it's AI logistics. That's it. Interesting, interesting. So um, Atif, we, what we know of the data center industry today is not what it'll be tomorrow, let alone 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. But why don't you talk a little bit about what some of those, some of the, the challenges are today, but ultimately how those challenges uh, swell as the uh, as data, data center builds continue at the pace that they are currently. Absolutely. So look, data centers account for nearly 10% of global construction volume right now. But as many people as they are at the conference, they only represent 0.05% of the construction labor force, including skilled labor. 
So it's a huge wow. task ahead yeah. of us as an industry of with a very small labor uh, supply to build, uh, you know, one of the grandest programs that human beings have ever attempted. Yeah. So there's a bit of a mismatch between what supply and what demand is pulling yeah. and what people can supply right now. So I think what we are seeing and where, again, Foresight is playing a role is making sure that this complexity does not overwhelm the supply chain uh, and the owners, the hyperscalers, but instead they use this learning process to stabilize the process by which they plan, execute their projects and minimize the risk. And that requires a kind of discipline that the industry didn't need to this point, simply because you could kind of start a project yes. and get going. Um, a colleague of mine at Oxford University calls it, think slow, act fast. And I think right now we've got it the other way around. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. people are acting very fast. Yeah. Um, you know, and but without thinking, which is causing a lot of snags. Yeah. And I think as this evolves, that complexity will need to be worked out. Yeah. Uh, for example, by using systems like ours to make sure that people are doing it in a very disciplined, data-based way. You know, right now it does it does truly feel like a hurry up and wait kind of scenario yeah. uh, where where we know it's got to be done, but hold up, there's uh, there's there are these other things, and so um, and you help to keep those dominoes upright so that they don't all come cascading down uh, and ultimately uh, cause a 12 month to be a 24 month kind of thing. Absolutely. Look, there's a lot of value being generated. Yeah. So there's a huge amount of wealth being created in the sector by people who are doing it in a very numeric, disciplined way. Mm -hmm. And that's what we stand for. So let's put on our, or let's put, uh, bring out our crystal balls. Mm -hmm. If you, if you had to tell our audience right now um, the trends that you're seeing today and where you think things are going, uh, what would those be? What would the biggest ones be? So look, there are lots of trends that everybody's very familiar with. The scale of projects mm -hmm. is through the roof. The power constraint is getting more and more severe. Yes. The rack densities are through the roof. Underpinning this is a huge evolution in design. So the switch from uh, air cooling to liquid cooling, yeah. uh, simply supporting the kind of power densities that are not now required. So I think all of those trends will continue. Alongside that is a much greater need to, uh, to upgrade the overall planning uh, stage grade and governance processes yeah. in the data center industry. It's in a way a very nascent kind of a startup industry yeah. um, with people that are pioneers. That is interesting. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, it is a little, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think there's elements of kind of more traditional governance, for example, from sectors like oil and gas mm -hmm. that needs to come in. There isn't the projects are getting as large as big oil and gas projects wow. into billions of dollars. Yeah. Um, so, and I think right now the industry is a bit light on that uh, thinking mm -hmm. uh, element because everybody is in such a hurry. Uh, so I do think the best players will take a deep breath, assess the situation and build that platform. Um, so for example, we're working with a large data center developer to help them develop a template schedule for their multi-trade racks, mm -hmm. which are built in a much more industrialized fashion. So they're really trying to optimize and modularize this one component of their build program that unleashes up to six months of time saving for them. But the way they're going about it is a very disciplined process. It's not a mad rush to modularize. I get it's, it. I get it. Yeah. It's uh, like a, you know, think slow and disciplined way mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. achieving those efficiencies. And ultimately, uh, uh, speed to market increases by slowing down a little bit. Huh? That's it. If you think harder in a much clearer way, yeah. it actually improves your ability to move a lot faster with the right partnerships. Atif, it's always great to have you on JSA TV. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Pleasure to be here. You bet. You bet. Thank and you. thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.